In the field of computer repair, you will often find that there are problems that, um, that aren't what you expect, but this is a whole new level of not what I expect. So let me show you this computer here. This, this Dell desktop, it hails from the days of Windows 7, okay? That's the power supply for said Dell desktop. That is my uh, little like repair supply that I use just to test things. And as you can see, I've ripped this sucker apart. Like I've got it just basically gutted. I have a, a separate power supply. I have all kinds of stuff going on here. There's a reason for this. See, this computer, it was turning itself off, going to sleep, turning itself on, and so on. I replaced the CMOS battery down there. I replaced the thermal paste which was baked on so bad that there's no way it wasn't a problem but surprisingly burn-in test didn't show it was overheating. I'm using a known good power supply but um, and I also even down here um, through there the memory sticks yeah one of those if you touched it it would crash the computer nice and hard. So I did all this stuff that these old computers have problems with, and it turned out none of these were the problem. Would you like to see what the real problem was that was causing this power issue where it would shut itself off at random and turn itself on at random? You see this? You see this thing right here? This? This is the power button. It's like, oh, oh, it's the power button? You don't say. Oh, look, I moved some stuff around and now the power is off. Uh, and there it goes again. It, it's actually done the thing that I was talking about. This is the problem. This switch, this power switch is our problem because it is maintaining intermittent contact. Now, think about that for just a minute. Think about what a power switch does. It closes a circuit that sends a signal to the board that says power switch pressed. And when the power switch is pressed, what does the computer do? Well, logically, it turns on. And if the computer's already up, it will do whatever it is that the computer's programmed to do whenever the power button's pressed. So, obviously, we have a problem here. This was configured to sleep when the power button was pressed. If the power button is held for four seconds straight, the power button will turn the computer off no matter what is set. Um, I can demonstrate that, in fact, if you don't believe me. Um, and, you know, if you press the power button when it's off, it'll turn on. So all of the problems can be traced back to the power button. Now, how would we go about testing this? Well, first of all, clearly this thing's messed up. So we have to find the power button. We have to find where it goes on the computer. So, where are you? Where are you? No, we don't want to see my fat. We want to see the power button. So, there's the power button. The back of the power button's there. And we'll follow that. Goes down and over. And comes back. And here's power switch. In fact, you can see it right there. Power switch on the motherboard. So, what we will do, and you see it's got LED and regular contacts there. What we will do is pull the power switch. Now notice the LED on the power switch is completely off. So we've pulled the power switch. This is how we'll confirm that the power switch is the problem. So the computer's just up being pretty. Uh, that actually is a really nice picture. Um, a little overdone on the photoshopping of those flowers to look colorful. Eh. Kind of kind of has a bad HDR thing going for it there. But the point is I chased my tail on this. I put, I hooked up a known good power supply because the problem was it was powering off. But it was also powering itself on. Now, the other thing is that can be motherboard. And in fact, weird power on, power off, like if you shut it down, it turns itself right back on, those kind of problems. A lot of times those can be traced to motherboard problems. The motherboard's turning itself back on. The motherboard's turning itself off. I see dirt on the lens. Hang on a second. Ew. So, when you have these problems, it's easy to blame it on the motherboard. It's easy to look around at all these other things because it makes sense that the computer would shut off 
or would go black or whatever if a memory stick was bad or if the processor overheats and triple faults the motherboard will shut itself off because that's what it does. If the power supply has bad capacitors, if it has a cooked voltage regulator that can't handle higher temperatures once it's under load, it's going to shut off and power will go away. And maybe the computer turns itself back on after a cool down period, I don't know. But it's easy to go power supply, maybe, CPU overheating, maybe, memory stick, maybe, but in the end, the symptoms actually point to this power button probably being the issue, not the other things that it would normally be. This is the life of a troubleshooter. Sometimes your vast body of knowledge does not cover the problem that you're actually trying to solve. Sometimes knowing all of the common problems leads you down paths where you miss an uncommon problem that's in place. This is also the reason why anytime anyone is an expert in a field and they tell you something and you believe it just outright because they're an expert, that that can be foolish. Because while an expert will have developed heuristic thinking that allows them to troubleshoot faster, to go towards more common problems faster, it also means that they have this set pattern in the way that they approach things, and they may miss something, they may forget something. That's why some of the smartest people make some of the dumbest mistakes, because you get into a pattern of thinking which is extremely useful and especially optimized for common case scenarios, but this is not a common case. You See that power button there? You know how many of those I've replaced? I've had a store for 14 years or an office or whatever, and I've been doing computer work for much longer than that, pretty much since forever. And not once have I replaced a power button for reasons other than physical damage caused by the button falling out of the case, uh, something hitting it too hard, you know, someone getting angry, someone spilling liquid on it. Um, somehow the wires, you know, the front panel gets ripped off the case and it destroys the power button wiring. I've only ever replaced buttons in, in circumstances like those, but never have I replaced a button for intermittent contact causing power on and off and sleep, ever. This is a first. This is a first, and I've been poking at computers for the better part of uh, more, more than 20 years now that I think about it. I think I built my first built computer in the late 90s. Um, so, yeah, very uncommon problem. But it's still on. It's the problem. It doesn't matter how uncommon it is, it's the problem, very clearly. So, just a little bit of a, an uncommon thing, and I really wanted to share that with you, because if you're learning to troubleshoot things, you need to understand that while videos like mine might show you common causes, give you a pattern of thinking that will help you in most circumstances, sometimes you need to take a step back and get a little more fundamental and go, what else could be going on here that isn't common? What am I missing? What is it that I need to think about that's related to this? Let's start assuming that everything I've done and everything I would do is not right. Where do we go from here? And that's just what you have to do. This doesn't just apply to computers. This applies to all troubleshooting. This applies to all problem solving. Sometimes the problem really is the rare case. Sometimes it is that random golden needle in a giant haystack. And you need to be aware that even though your thinking for the vast majority is perfectly good for the vast majority, sometimes it can completely block you from the real solution. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Like, comment, subscribe, please. And also look down at the bottom for links where you can go to my website to support me. Uh, lots of options down there. Thanks for watching again, and take care.